very unconscious of the time, so I'm going to move on to the next priority, have good health and well-being. And um, again, it, it speaks for itself in terms of, of health and healthcare, but I think the important part of this is, is, is the well-being. So this is actually just about people's everyday things and needs, whether that's about um, access to emotional support, not just, just sort of physical health, or whether it's about just access to activities that, that improve your day-to-day your -day feeling, whether that's sport or cultural activities or even socialising, going to the pub. Um, there's some quotes up there. Um, the, the stat we have is that 50% of disabled islanders experience at least some difficulty getting the healthcare they need, which is, is, a, is a huge number and something that we need to look at. Um, some of the quotes there, there's about a carer, um, she was someone with mental health issues, who was at crisis point, but she found a support group and that's changed her life immeasurably. Um, a female wheelchair user um, speaks about the, the challenges of, of, of leading a healthy lifestyle um, because she can't even be weighed to know what, what, what her weight is to know about working out diet and, and um, exercise routines. Um, and finally, um, a male wheelchair user just talking about this, this idea of it's actually harder to do the really simple things that other people take for granted. Uh, things that help you let off steam at the weekend, so whether that, like I say, whether that is going to the pub or whether it's playing football, um, those things are just harder for him to, to access. Okay, so in terms of what, what can we do about that, like I mentioned, access to emotional support. Um, one thing that we think is important is that care providers, whether that's GPs or hospitals, have the information to signpost people into further support, which is often what would be supplied by the voluntary community sector. And that is happening in some areas, but it could, could be better. So, for example, people um, who have experienced a stroke uh, uh, you know, can point you straight away to the Stroke Association, um, or people accessing the eye clinic um, have access to eye care. And like I said, that, that does happen, but, but there's areas where people aren't being joined up and they miss out on this awareness that, that they can get further support. Um, support in and independence. Um, one of the actions we're proposing is, in terms of long-term care, is this idea of personalised budgets, which exists in the UK. So people can choose the way their care is provided to them that suits their needs and what they want, rather than being told what is suitable for them. I think it's a, it's a kind of important shift in looking at those things. Um, accessing, yeah, uh, general well-being and good health, this is the point I made earlier about football and the pub, so what things can be done to, to make those things easier for disabled people, whether that's working with um, sports development team just about saying what there is in terms of accessible sports facilities. I think there's more than people think, but again, people just don't know about it. Um, and working with cultural organisations to, to look at things and that, but potentially could be physical barriers, such as the issue of the Opera House, um, but also just in terms of encouraging people to, to access activities. And finally, this, this action isn't just about the individual themselves, but actually it's about their support network, so their carers and their wider family unit, and, and what can we do to help them with their health and well-being. Um, and part of that's looking at um, short break services, so sort of respite care and what's available. And again, making that suitable to people's needs, so not just being told this is what you've got, deal with it, but actually <laughs> what would help you. Um, and working with uh, Jackie's, the Association of Carers, about the potential of, of putting carers' rights into law. Um, I'll jump on to the fourth one. This is, again, fairly self-explanatory about having, making sure people have equal access to education and employment. And enriching activities by that, we mean people who aren't able to work are able to lead fulfilling lives by doing other things, whether that's volunteering or accessing day centres and day services. Um, there's a couple of stats on there about um, people having difficulty accessing those things. I went to the, the talk the other evening or the discussion, the scrutiny panel, discuss, mm -hmm. public discussion on further education, funding of. Mm -hmm. Lots of adult parents there and some young people. Nobody had disability as an issue. Nobody raised that. The fact of yeah, and we've got it on here because we think it is an issue. Well. Um, and and in terms of of within the you know up to sixteen, that, that is fairly well catered for. We want to look at it around the edges in terms of in in, in promoting inclusion. But actually, the the, the gap seems to be post sixteen. Um, 
uh, particularly because potentially disabled people have more challenges in terms of, of doing things off island. So, so what's available on island? Um, we don't know. There's pockets. There's certain things that Highland does, um, but there could be more. So we want to look at the a kind of a review of what is available and what needs to change um, within schools. Again, sort of promoting um, uh, cultural change and attitudinal changes. Um, it, it's important, as you know, with most things, to start at an early age to to influence people's. Um, Thoughts and actually, the, the one thing that was suggested by students themselves was this idea of a disability champion. And for the older students, they felt that that actually, if they'd had someone they were younger who could say, "Hey, this is me. This is this is this is what I do." That, that would would help not only the, the disabled students in giving them a positive role model, but actually also kind of open the eyes of, of other people within the school, both teachers and students. Um, in terms of employment opportunities, again, there's much more actions proposed in the document than I've had opportunity to put here. Um, one of them about pro helping people um, to change jobs or progress in their career. Often people feel the box is ticked. If you're in employment, that's fine. You've got a job. We have, don't have anything to worry about. And that's not the case in terms of people wanting to, to give back to the island as much as they can and reach their potential. Uh, we need to help people, to save people not just make do in terms of jobs, but actually, you know, give as much as they can. Um, and also look at um, workplace discrimination. The survey revealed that uh, almost 30% of disabled islanders felt they've been discriminated against in the last year, and the, the top source of discrimination was, was employers and, and verbals, uh, was, um, was colleagues. So it, we need to look at what's going on there. Um, and then I mentioned about this um, enriching activity, so it's looking at um, promoting opportunities for volunteering um, and looking at what currently is available for people. Um, and I will whiz on to the last priority, um, and this really is fundamental to the strategy, and it goes back to a lot of the conversations we've been, we've been having today about people's attitudes and the way disability is viewed on Ireland and making it an integral part of the of society and that's a really difficult thing I'm not saying that's easy and I'm not saying that putting a few words in a strategy will change things it's something that that the world over people are continually working on um, um, people campaigning for disability rights you know it's not a job that ever finishes respect people are people not yeah. Stop that. yeah and that's so, gonna happen you just learn to live with it but also, you, you've got to chip away at it and, and, and do everything you can to, to try and change things. Um, and, and often something that comes up in terms of disability awareness is just people genuinely not knowing or not having experienced things before. And as soon as you talk to them, it actually kind of opens their eyes. And I think a good example of that is um, Liberty Bus and doing what they can in terms of disability awareness training with their, their staff. And again, it, it's just this sense of, I didn't realise, so one of the examples was um, a, a teenage boy with autism um, wore headphones um, and played music because he felt more comfortable getting around with that. He went to the bus driver to, to get a bus ticket or to show his pass um, and the bus driver thought that this guy was being disrespectful and you know insisted that he took his headphones off and turned his music off because he'd just been a pesky youth, whereas actually that was part, yeah, fundamentally important yeah. to him. Mm -hmm. And again, if he'd had that awareness training before, he may have had a second thought and, and not cause this, this individual a lot of distress and it ultimately put him off using the bus for a long time. But they, they, these organisations say the right things, but they don't do them. I have a constant battle with the bus station, for example, amongst many issues, about not putting banquettes seating their seating in front of the timetables. So the people can't get to the timetables. If you've got a wheelchair, you've got no chance of getting anywhere near the timetables. Now that sort of basic stuff, yeah. what they got to do is move the seats. That's all they got to do with the movement. And they won't do it. They resist. They fight. Oh, that's the way we always do it. All that sort of nonsense. And that's an organisation which is supposed to be aware. Yeah. So that's still an issue now, is it? Absolutely. Okay. I'll I spoke to them yesterday about okay. it. Okay, I will look into that. Um, so hopefully you've read by now some of those quotes up there. Um, I mentioned people with assistance dogs not being let into to restaurants. Um, people again just being this kind of inadvertent discrimination so people be, you know a wheelchair user told you're too pretty to, to be in a wheelchair I, just, I, I don't know what to say to that I don't know what 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 what, what more I can elaborate on but again it just goes back to work we can you know work on people at an earlier age people wouldn't, wouldn't think that way um, 
Okay, so in terms of what we can do, well, number one, challenge discrimination, get this legislation sorted um, so that we have the teeth to do things and to make people change things. Um, actually have this coordinated approach to promoting disability awareness amongst on the island, amongst the general public, which would include working with the media to get this kind of true picture of disability quite often. The, the feedback we've had from islanders is that the disability in the media is, is all these poor people, oh, you know, um, it's only, say, people in wheelchairs, it's only older people, there's no, there's no kind of uh, acknowledgement of the spectrum of disability. Um, so that's something to work on. Um, look at promoting participation and engagement. Um, so a little bit like that, I mentioned that service user forum session. So islanders living with disability and carers, um, meeting with politicians to, to kind of open their eyes to some of the issues that they face. Economic equality, another thing that came up a lot in the research um, was actually just it costs more to be disabled. Um, whether that's... that's it. Yeah, whether that's because you can only access the local shop rather than the cheaper supermarket because you can't get there, whether that's because you have a hearing impairment so you need a special kind of smoke alarm that costs ten times as much as a regular one and requires an electrician to fit, which costs, so rather than your smoke alarm costing a fiver, it costs £300. Um, and the UK actually carried out um, some work to, to work out those costs and figure out <laughs> what, how much more it costs just by dint of, 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 of having a disability. So, Potentially, we could do something similar over here, and then look to address how we how we mitigate against that. Um, and then the very final one: civic participation. So again, part of changing people's attitudes in terms of disability is actually just make, bringing people more into the public eye. So. Um, Working with Community Relations Trust, they did a piece of work recently in terms of um, women and getting uh, more women um, in senior positions such as board members or as elected representatives and the, the suggestion is to do something similar um, for, for disabled people. Um, and then another part of it is actually getting engaged in the political environment. Um, there's some barriers already in terms of access to voting. Um, if you have visual impairment and probably physical access as well. Yeah, um, because if you're a deputy or a senator, you can't get in the stage chamber. Yeah. Um, so that's the lesson. Well, I think it's easier to get in the stage chamber. Um, when Paul Ritchie carried out the um, living yeah. with disability for a day, it's a circuitous route, but in an, an electric realtor, he could get into his seat in the chamber. The problem is the public access viewing gallery is, is not. When they were remodeling the whole state's chamber, the whole state's building, we tried to have meetings with the bailiff, and the bailiff then was very resistant about changing anything that looked ancient and historic. That's why things like the Royal Court are a disaster, because they didn't want to lose the history. We had to fight even the steps at the front. We had to fight like mad just to get handrails put on those steps. That's how far they resist. And that, yeah, and, and what the, the ultimate hope of the strategy, and particularly the legislation, is, is that in... 10 years' time, that, that if we're having conversations, those stories are the historical stories. Not the but stories. that legislation about the handrails specifically was in the... That was already legislation because they were carrying out alterations to the entrances. Yeah. They had to be in there, but they fought all the way not to put them there. And they still haven't put the nosings on the steps for the dome. No, what will happen is the legislation will eventually get there, we know that. Mm. But the trouble is they'll water it down so much that there'll be so many loopholes that people will be able to leap through it will be, be meaningless. Right. Like we've seen this for decades. Well, so be, don't yeah. put too much hope out on this because <laughs> well, I wish we could do something more here by telling people, look, we, this is the problem, this is what's going to happen, so make sure it doesn't. Yeah, well, there'll be, there will be consultation on the, the legislation as well. So, again, with that, it's important to be vocal. I don't, don't want to, to be too pessimistic, but the, the Convention on the Rights of the Child was brought in last year. Mm -hmm. Has anybody got a clue what they're supposed to do as a result of it? Nobody will know. There's no promotion. There's no promotion about it. Maybe it's schools, they know what's going on, but the general public haven't got a clue what difference that's supposed to make. Mm -hmm. And this is how it carries on. If they sign up to this Convention on the Discrimination on Against Disability or Disabled Persons, mm -hmm. Unless it's got a huge budget, nothing will happen. It'll be a total waste of time. Can I just add, this is quite ironic, that we're meeting today to discuss, to discuss disability rights mm -hmm. on the day that 
president of the so-called greatest nation mm. in the world, has been, is being inaugurated and has actually bullied and mocked. Yeah. That, that, no, that's not we where. We have to be realistic, but we can mm. try. Yeah. And things have been done and things will be done, yeah. but it's slow. It's slow, and we've got like a chipping away. It's constant, yeah. and it needs everybody. And it goes back to what I said at the beginning that it's about the whole island and trying Absolutely. to get everyone involved. And, and that at least tough. we are doing something. Yeah. Um, does anyone else? Uh, it's already beyond our allocated time. Does anyone else have anything they would like to say or any questions? If not, please do get in touch with me separately, and we can talk through anything. There's a couple of you that I'd like to catch up with about particular issues. And